So here is, here's a diagram, and maybe you want to copy it. Uh, I particularly want to get the relationship between slices and shells. And I want you to see it, and I want you to be able to be very comfortable with how the formulas for each one relate to each other. Okay. We've been doing this for a while now, yeah? So slices, how do I get slices out of a shape like this? Notice, here's my, um, here's my shape, okay? The area that I'm rotating is actually just a rectangle over here. Can you see it? There's my rectangle there, and I've rotated it around the y-axis, okay? So if I wanted to do this particular volume by slices, how would I do it? What kind of shape would I get? Now I should ask, where do I slice? What direction am I slicing in? When you do slices, slices, <coughs> slices are perpendicular to the axis of rotation, right? Well, we know this, don't we? Okay, so I'm going to slice this way, okay, across um, off the top, if you like, and then I will go further down, okay? So when you slice this across, you're going to get this shape, and we gave it a name, right? We call this, what do we call it? An annulus, right? Or if you like, an annular <laughs> disc, okay? Um, that's the kind of shape you get if you slice across, like so, okay? Now, alternatively, and this is what you learned last time when I wasn't here, we don't have to slice across, right, perpendicular to the um, axis of rotation. We can slice the other way, or rather we can cut the other way, okay? So if I did that, for instance, if I took a portion like that, okay, there you go, this instead is parallel to the axis of rotation. So when I rotate this around, what am I going to get? We call it a shell, don't we? If I took this innermost part here, you'd get something like this. Okay, except it would be hollow. It's of infinitesimally thin width, right? And then you add them all up, okay? Now that's fine, you should all have diagrams drawn like this, but it's a bit hard to um, picture and really understand what's going on, okay? So, for starters, let's get this guy up. Okay, now, here's my slice. Okay, so can you see, I've, well, I've, I've, I've tried anyway, okay? We're looking at this thing and we've taken a slice off, okay? Now, just because of the particular shape I've chosen, all the slices would actually be the same, wouldn't they, okay? But in any other case, you know, you'd have a whole bunch of different, you know, similar slices, but they'd all be different sizes and so on, okay? So do you remember, to express the volume from a slice, right? Slices. We said, the volume would be equal to, okay, and we think about these, um, these disks, right, as the disks get really, really thin, okay? So we said, look, there's a limit involved. Um, now, for this, um, the slices are going to be thin vertically, aren't they? Thin vertically, okay? So we call these anything we like, but I think a good name would be delta y, okay? Because they're, they're vertical disks, okay? They're very thin that way. Right, so that's, sorry, that's what each of the disks is, is going to be, its thickness, right? Then I want to add up all of the disks, right? All the disks. Now, because I'm slicing across this way, I have a whole bunch of disks sitting on top of each other vertically, okay? So therefore, it'll be from, and then you just pick whatever your boundaries are, right? Remember this? This is A to B, okay? Now, remind me, what's the, oh, oops. What's the area of an annulus? How do I work this thing out? Big circle minus the little circle, right? So this is what we came up with. They both have pi in them, because they're both circles. And then you've got the big circle minus the little circle, okay? Now, I'm going to, um, this is a bit tricky. I want to remind you of the fact that each of these radii, right? Well, I mean, sometimes, as in this case, sometimes the radii are constant, but they don't have to be. They don't have to be, they can change and wiggle and all that kind of thing. So really these R's, right, they're actually functions. It's R of X squared, right? It's a function, R of X. And this little r is also a function, little r of X squared, okay? So there you go, pi, big circle, little circle, but of course what I want is really a volume, okay? So you have the thickness of the slice, right? And what's the thickness in this context? It's, it's delta y, isn't it? Okay, so there you go. There's our shape. And from this, we evaluate the limits. We go to zero. And then you say, okay, now I know what this is called. This is an integral. And you get this familiar result that we've seen before. 
Okay, oops, pi's there, yep, that's good. Um, r squared minus r squared dy. Okay, so we've seen this before, good. Now, what happens when you get one of these guys out? Or should I say, when you get one of these guys out? Okay, so there he is, right? So this is, I've tried to do the innermost one, okay? Obviously, as I would go further out, I would just have bigger shells, wouldn't I? Okay, um, in this case, they'd all be the same height. But I guess their, um, their radius would change, wouldn't they? They'd be a big diameter, okay? Now, before we held this thing up and I said, what's the, um, how do I work out the volume? You told me area, and then we multiplied by that infinitesimally small thickness, okay? Well, hmm. the advantage of having um, this thing out is that you see the thickness is going to be the same. It's gonna be some delta something, okay? But it'll be a different <coughs> shells, okay? This volume, right, it's not, about, it's not about a vertical thickness, right? That's, that's what these are. These are all stacked up on each other vertically, okay? These are not stacked up on each other vertically, right? In fact, what's going on is it's changes in x, right? It's a delta x, which is the small thickness, okay? So instead of this start, I'm going to have this. The limit is going to be delta x approaching 0, okay? Now, what am I adding up? Again, you select your boundaries, but they're going to be x boundaries because my, my uh, little areas that I'm forming my volumes out of, they're all going to be lined up along the x-axis, right? So you go from one boundary, whoops, to the next one. Okay, now, pause. This part here has to do with the annulus, right? And, and all these pieces are from the shape of an annulus and how you work out the area of an annulus. How do you work out the area of this thing? Hmm. Well, see the wonderful thing about this, right, is that um, if you think about it the right way, it's a trivially simple area, right? Because if all I do is this, it's a rectangle, right? I can do rectangles. All I need to know is how high this thing is, right, at any given point, and don't forget it can change just like these guys can. And then I just need to know how far across it is. It's a rectangle, right? So what I want is, I want to know when I, when I unfold this out, okay, like this. Um, I want to know this height, okay, and then I want to know this distance. Now hold on a second, what is this distance? If you remember, <laughs> where did I get it from? And the answer is, <laughs> I got it from, well, what happened? How did it un- Because I'm so easily amused. How did I turn this into, how did I do it? I, I cut it, right? Where does it come from? It looks to me like, that's um, that, that long line there, this guy, come on, you can tell me what it is, what is it? It's the circumference across the top, right? The circumference around... Okay, you get it, right? So the circumference, of course, is 2 pi r, right? If you know what r is, okay? So now, I can put this together now, okay? Instead of this business in here, this business in here, which is about a big circle minus a little circle. There's no big circle minus a little circle here. There's no circles once you think about what the area is. It's a rectangle, okay? So that's why what you get in here is going to be 2 pi, now, in exactly the same way that this big radius and this little radius are actually functions, and they change. That's why we're using integration for this, okay? Now, there you go. There is the rectangle, the rectangle. Here it is, okay? Question, a rectangle has no volume, but I'm adding up volumes. What do I need? What's my missing piece to make this into a volume? It's, um, it's thickness, isn't it? It's thickness, which in this case <coughs> is delta x. Okay, there you go, right? Okay, so just like before, I can take this thing, which is, this is the adding up the slices, this is adding up the shells, and I can turn this into the integral, which you're more familiar with, okay? This time you get a whole two pi out the front here. You get two pi, integrate from a to b of uh, h dx, in this case, right? Obviously, if I was not rotating on this axis, everything would be swapped, 
right? Everything would be swapped. These would all be x's in here, and these would all be y's. But you get the idea. This is just one example, OK? Um, the important thing is that you get what's going on from here to here and here to here. When I've seen people get confused from this, they're like, ah, oh, there are circles, and then they go to shells, and then they try and put circles into there. There are no circles, right? When you unfold a shell, you just get a rectangle. Simple, okay? 